Welcome back smart people. We're on to building the next sub-assembly of this clock, the Turbolon, which I had some struggles with, but we'll get to that in a moment. First up, the parts. We got our eight tooth gear, which unfortunately was omitted from the original instructions. Um, had to go find it from the original A26 design and printed off one of them. Basically the newly printed stuff is in white. And you'll notice a few other parts here have two of them. One in white, one in silver. That's because I ran into some problems with the small bearings. If we look at the next part here, the 15T Anchor 2, this piece. This one in silver has a hole on either side for a small 2.5 millimeter, yeah, small, uh, small bearing to go into either side. Either I got a bad set of bearings, or when I installed them, they were misaligned. But I could not get a pin to easily spin once run through the bearing on either end. So I went back to A26's original design and grabbed his, uh, um, his 15T anchor, reamed it out so it would fit on the same post. And I found that if I did that... I could get a much better result than using the proper bearing itself. Which, well, all these parts need to smooth, spin smoothly because this is the escape mechanism. Next up is the 15 tooth escape gear. Again, same problem, the one in silver, two bearings, it just didn't quite work. They're misaligned. If I go ahead and do something similar now it spins much much smoother and doesn't bind up after one or two revolutions then in terms of parts we got a couple of spacers here which we will use to uh, space off the balance wheel in the whole mechanism so that it fits together properly we got the balance wheel, pro wheel proper again same deal I could not get it to spin smoothly on the two bearings so I got rid of it and printed off another one put a couple of m3 screws with some uh, nuts on it for weight and reamed it out to three millimeters so that if we use a three millimeter shaft here with my hands of ham and fingers of butter this now spins quite smoothly where before with the bearings, I could maybe get it to do four or five revolutions if I really, really tried. So, this is much better now. It's not nearly as sophisticated, but simpler, and I can do it with files and so forth, and I don't want to deal with ordering the bearings at this time. Then we have the Turbolon Turb Frame Back 2. Um, oh, I should probably go back and explain what I did to some of these things. Uh, for the escape gear, I reamed out the center to two millimeters so that it would spin on the shaft. For the escape, uh, the balance wheel, I reamed out the center to three millimeters so it would spin easily on the shaft and put weights made up of M3 screws and nuts on either end. The spacers just had to ream them out so they would fit over a three millimeter shaft. And now back to the Torb frame back two. This has a hole here for a two millimeter pin to go into it and then receptacles that will end up getting passed through for uh, uh, M2 screws, which I ended up stripping out when I first tried to assemble this and had to ream them out and they now hold M2.5 uh, screws. Then next piece here, we got the Turbolon Turb Frame Middle 2. This has a total of six spots for M.2 screws that need to be threaded and spots to hold a two millimeter diameter pin so those need to be fitted after that at the turb frame middle two and it looks similar and again you notice there's two of them when i went to take this apart so i could film it after i got everything together to make sure you didn't have to see me fumble horrifically Although, if it had been a complete failure, I would have recorded it and shown you that. Um, this one, 
I crapped, cracked, not crapped, I cracked the hex end off of it and had to print a new one. So that's scrap as well. It uh, printed off another one, got reamed out to three millimeters down the center, cleared so it would take three M.2 screws through it, so, or a pinhole out so it would hold a two millimeter shaft, and put one of the small bearings in place. Uh, this one is a, this is a three by six by 2.5 bearing. I considered going with the original part for this, um, but due to how things, the rest of the pieces went together, this one I still need to use the bearing on. And this one moved smoothly enough that it didn't matter. And lastly, we got the balance spring. We have the Turb frame top two, that's the piece in blue here. Uh, for this, tap three M.2 screws, ream out the center, so three millimeter pin goes through it easily. Thread a M.2 or M2 screw hole here for a five millimeter long screw, and this is used to hold the balance spring in place. In addition to that, we need some M2 screws and in my case some M3 screws because I uh, stripped things out and had to redo them along with a 13 and 16 millimeter long pin. Uh, for the longer M2 and M2.5 screws I used 8 millimeter long ones. These 2.5 that I screwed up for this I just used uh, 5 or 6 millimeter long ones not a big deal. In addition we also have our fork frame that we assembled previously and the three millimeter rod that's in it because we will be assembling the tuberlon and installing it in the frame when we get to the end of this. Take that apart so we can get the rod out. Let's start because let's see here that spins relatively freely so that one works. Here is the balance wheel that spins nicely and uh, let's see what else does it need to go through it to go through there pretty easily etc 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 that's done all right moving on let's start making this thing we'll start out by taking our eight tooth gear and on the tube frame middle 2b we need to put that gear looks like that and this will go roughly at the bottom of our shaft when it goes in the uh, fork frame later on and then with this we need to take this and put it in the center of this all right the long 16 millimeter rod that goes in Turb frame middle to B. Make sure that really goes in properly. And on that goes the anchor. Thirteen millimeter shaft here, and the turbulent frame back two, and this is where. Oops. Got that upside down. Well, that doesn't quite fit now, does it? I guess with this one, I need to sand off the interface there, or at least remove it. Let's look at the old one. Yeah, the new one's definitely taller than the old one. Let's see if we can quickly shave it off without cutting my hand. Where's layer separation when you really need it? There we 
we are. Get rid of that. And that should go on like this. Then at that point, we should now have well, set that aside for the moment. This needs to be screwed in place using the Gonna put the gear there. Gonna put the make sure I get this the right way up. And that did not work as intended. There we are. Now let's tighten this up. So we now have part of the frame. And at this point, I need to put this here. And this definitely requires M2.5 screws. More hands of ham and fingers of butter. All right, much better now. So it should smoothly in in the one direction but not the other and it almost looks like a spacer there but even without it looks like it continues to mesh good enough yeah hopefully it'll be good enough we'll find out shortly now goes on. And the trick here, there is a lobe that sticks off of the balance wheel on one side and that needs to fit into the little cup area on the fork there. That is the big trick to all of this, getting that to mesh together. All right, then our mainspring and the rest of the tube frame. There's a hex socket on the spring, a hex socket or a hex end on the balance wheel. There we are. Did I get it to seat properly? Yes, I did. Let's put in a screwdriver. All right, let's get this shaft centered a bit. And now, make sure it's still aligned properly in there. Now, if we take our probe frame, and slide this gear, this eight tooth gear, should fit in to this large gear at the bottom of the turb frame. And then the small teeth on the escape gear should fit into the outer ring here. And I got this to work easily the other day. Hopefully it still does. Now, if we do this, apply some downward pressure on the spindle there, and put some tension on this gear, and knock the balance wheel into place, start it moving, and it should go tick-tock like this.
and now you can imagine what this whole thing would look like with these pieces spinning, this whole thing turning on the end of a uh, end of the frame, and the whole frame rotating around as well. Thanks for watching.